you don't get to see him be John Kramer all that often. Right. And Orrin and myself made the decision to go, let's, let's meet John Kramer and let's live with John Kramer for a while and go on his journey for this movie. And that's what this film is. Guys, this movie is it's right up there with the first Saw. It hit on so many levels. Um, and I think the Saw franchise is best when it's focused on John Kramer, because I love the character of John Kramer. He's so fantastic. Um, now, this we've seen John Kramer kind of represent the worst in humanity at times, but this side, this time, we really tap into his human side and his more sympathetic side. What went into that decision-making to see this side of John Kramer? We really wanted to tell John's story and kind of go back. And the only way to do it is to do it pre-Saw 3 while he was still alive. So we had to go back in time and, and ask our audience to just believe it. And it's a standalone movie. You don't have to see any other Saw movie to love this movie. Absolutely. And, and it's John's in, you know, we've seen Tobin Bell be Jigsaw a ton, but you don't get to see him be John Kramer all that often. Right. And Orrin and myself made the decision to go, let's, let's meet John Kramer and let's live with John Kramer for a while and go on his journey for this movie. And that's what this film is. John Kramer to me feels like the punisher of the horror genre, right? Yeah. Like he, he's, he's, he's got, Great quote, right? he, he really is. But, I, but he, uh, Tobin Bell is so good in this role. Can you guys talk to me about what makes you guys fall in love with Tobin Bell in this film and in the franchise as a whole? He's one of us. I mean, in, in, especially in this movie, he's a guy that, you know, we learn in the second, second scene of the movie that he has terminal cancer. Right. He has months, not years. And he then finds out, in, you know, through various sources that there's experimental surgery, experimental treatment to extend his life. All of us would do it. You'd do it, yeah, I would yeah. do it, Mark would do it. To extend, someone said, you can do this, go get a satchel of money and go do this, you would try it. And so I think it makes him real because everyone would do what he'd do. You, you for the first 25 minutes of the movie, you'd be in his shoes every step. In a heartbeat. Exactly. Absolutely. But I think that's what makes him accessible. Completely. Now, I gotta ask because there's so many cool traps in this movie. So many cool traps. Uh, what stands out is one of your favorites? We'd like different traps, so I like the, uh, the, where the, the head and the leg trap. Oh, I, I had to turn away a couple times on that one. How about for yourself? I love the first trap with the, the eyeballs, which is kind of like everybody's nightmare. Like, you know, everybody's bent their finger back or jammed it or hurt it, but try bringing your finger all the way to your wrist. It, that, that gotta be painful. But I also love the, the you know, everybody's heard of waterboarding. Sure. And, 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 and when we, the writers came up with a bloodboarding trap, I was like, ingenious. Now, this takes place between Saw 1 and 2. Is In this time frame, this time era, is this where you would like to continue on with the franchise from this point on? We don't, uh, and this isn't like a hero comment, but we don't, we're very superstitious. We don't really think too much about what we're gonna do next until this one comes out. And one of the reasons too is you, you realize some people like characters, don't like characters, how they react, how the audiences react. So, and then we kind of read and react. So, but um, we'll start October second. Yeah, thinking about if if this movie works, where should the story go? As long as I get more John Kramer, I'm in. I love it. So thank you guys so much John for time. John Kramer is definitely alive. If there's another Saul movie, I love it. Yeah. Thanks, guys.